Episode 66 of Multiplaying is brought to you by the Pentium Overdrive. It likes God fucking shitballs. <laughs> it's that, and it's it's like super fast. It's like you don't even know. Everybody online looking good. A companion podcast to the collaborative blog and gaming community that's playing as life allows. This is multiplaying. Well, let's start the insanity. We have clearance, Clarence. Roger, Roger. What's our vector, Victor? Hello. Uh, great heavens! What kind of radio show is this? <laughs> That'll work. Whatever. The shit balls part's great. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> like, like it's so fast that you like you can't even put it into words. You just get like overwhelmed, like by all the shit balls. Like I get fucking, I just yeah. It's just so can... fast it causes Tourette's. <laughs> On the show tonight we got Dean. Hey, hi, Jason. Hello, and me, Steve. Uh, let's. What is? What are you drinking tonight, Dean? Oh, I went straight to the hard stuff. Water. I'm drinking water. What? I know. <laughs> what year is it? It's a uh, it's a 2011 straight out of the water tower that I can see from my house. Mm. Mm. It's a good year. Yeah, it's kind of musky. <laughs> <laughs> well, Keep it that's, in casks. That's that's really weird. <laughs> it is uh, it is kind of weird. <laughs> J- Jason, what are you drinking? I'm drinking a Guinness. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh. Your first drink of the night. Uh, second a no. bottle or a can. I did the can into a glass. Very nice. So you got the good pour. Yeah. Good. Oh yeah. It looked it looked gorgeous. Mm. Mm-hmm. You're very jealous now. How's that water treating? You? Um. It's. <laughs> did it look good. Did it look cool when you poured it? Probably not. It did. Cool. There were some air bubbles that kind of floated. Up yeah, I don't. To think, this. I don't think that's good. <laughs> I don't have... think that's a good sign. Maybe that's why it's musky. Did it have know. a head? <laughs> God, I hope not. Yeah, you don't want that. <laughs> uh it's like it's uh, the Saturday night Saturday night live the uh the commercial for Swill. Oh god, oh, I I remember that but water from like Lake Michigan. Oh yeah. God damn it. Yeah, I remember watching it. It's like, okay, I live right by that. <laughs> I know. Fine. It's, it like slow pours out of the bottle and it's <laughs> supposed to be water, but it has like uh beer bottle like tabs in it and shit it's you know, awesome it goes really well with quarry cereal remember <laughs> that commercial i remember colon blow you, oh, oh. quarry was like super old it was bill murray and it was a, uh, it was a cereal that was supposed to be good for you and it was rocks basically <laughs> so they show a family like oh, it's all crunching oh, like need... all the all the minerals in it <laughs> need thompson's teeth to chew through that shit yeah, for exactly. nice Futurama Good. reference there. Yeah, uh, and we're just now on to me. What, what are you drinking? I am drinking a uh, wine. Actually, it's a uh, rose table wine uh, by a local vineyard. We actually have a new local winery and vineyard uh, near my place, about half hour away, and it's uh, it's pretty damn good. It's a company's called Country Heritage, so they're like off the highway, and they're it's pretty awesome. Nice. Did you go there and check it out? I did bit? go there and check it out, and uh, they they didn't have like any tour type stuff going on. They were actually just like putting. But you, the, but put, you just busted in. I just like, like give me the give me the, give me the shit. Word and walked in. Uh, yeah, but they were having like an open house sort of thing to like come out and try like samples, and uh, I walked in uh, pretty sober, and the lady kind of finished off some bottles on me, and I walked out pr- feeling pretty happy. Uh, you know, if, yeah. if you ever want to see the happiest people on earth, you go to a wine tasting. Yeah. Uh, ha- <laughs> like, not only the other people, but the, even, like, the people serving were, like, all fantastic people. Yeah. Uh, no, the, you, you will never find a sad person at a wine tasting. Yeah. That, I mean, that was the the, uh, the woman that was serving us. was She was great. And what was funny about going in there is, like, while we were in there and we went over after we tasted and grabbed uh, a bottle and we were walking up to the cash register and as we were standing there excuse me getting ready to pay another couple walked into the place and pointed at the lady that was uh giving us our samples and they were like this is the lady that i was telling you about she's so awesome (laughs) exactly (laughs) i was like yeah i think i think she was uh she's a renowned for finishing off bottles for people so uh (laughs) it was good good time uh but let's get into what we've been playing uh dean hi Long-time listener and podcaster, what have you been playing? 
Um, I have uh, been playing a lot of what everyone else has been playing. I don't know. I don't know what we want to start off with. So, do we want to save La Noir? La Noir. Um, Noir. La yes. Noir. <laughs> yeah, save Noir. it. Save it. Okay. Let's save that for the the, the last one. And uh, so, other than La Guar, what have you been playing? So I'm gonna I'm gonna just touch very very briefly on this because I only played it very briefly, um, and it was something that you guys talked about last week, Terraria, mm-hmm. and um, just the kind of like 2D Minecraft clone. And I gotta say that I completely agree with Jason. I'm like nodding my head as I'm listening to the podcast because I'm playing Terraria, and while I'm playing it. I, I kind of like look at myself and I go, I could be playing Minecraft instead. You know, so, I, I, I'm kind of glad to hear that because I listened to the podcast afterward and I, I wondered if I was being too harsh, which I, I mean, I wasn't harsh on the game. I, I it, It's a great game, but I wondered if I was de- minimize, de- minimizing it while saying I'd rather be playing Minecraft. I don't think you were at all, but I, I think that it comes in the fact that there's I was really confused about it, and what I actually had to do is just and maybe i'm maybe I'm dumb, but it doesn't really it doesn't really tell you not that you need to have a goal, but it doesn't tell you what your goals are and it's not very obvious that you can have n p c s move into your town or anything like that so i what I actually did was just boot it up uh <clears throat> i think it was on like a terraria wiki or something um some beginner's guide that showed you you know this is what you should be doing uh, you know you should be building a house and trying to get npcs to move and i'm like oh okay i yeah. i see what that's about and and the more i thought about that after playing it i i get what they're doing by not doing any of that that intro uh tutorial type stuff because that's what minecraft did but when you have Minecraft really is just do whatever the fuck you want to do. In Terraria, uh-huh. the, yeah, there is that NPC type goal. They should have added something to that in the game. And I was talking about this um, with a friend today, and and we completely agreed. When when you play Minecraft, especially when they uh, when they included the new achievement system, it actually does give you some task based items and and goals to work toward. You may not know exactly how to get there, but you know that they're possible. And so Terraria just sort of like drops you into this sandbox which is fine if if you like that kind of game that's great um but sometimes you just you just don't know what to do you know what i mean so <clears throat> oh yeah yeah i think i only there played sh- about there should have been a little bit more guidance i think in that game it would have benefited benefited from it i agree um but i've only you know i've only played about an hour so i'm probably doing it a disservice by even giving an opinion on it but i just wanted to say that i i i the whole time I was playing it, I'm like, I could just totally be playing Minecraft. It controls better. Uh, <laughs> there's not these stupid slimes attacking me every two seconds. And... Well, and, and the big issue I have with the slimes, I don't even remember if I talked about in the podcast, is um, it's all it's two dimensional. So you can't avoid that shit. Really, you have to no. deal with it. And I kept like during the daytime, like, okay, I'm doing this. Okay, it's like your here, wife. Here you comes have some, to deal with here it. Come, here comes some <laughs> fucking slimes. I got to figure out how I'm gonna deal with you know approach you know either go down or what what weapon i'm gonna i'm gonna have to fight it or time it very carefully to where it jumps over me but in minecraft when you have the three dimensions i mean you can do so much while avoiding shit and in terraria you can't do that and i think that and i think that's just a fundamental difference that terraria is a lot more combat centric and you know when you do have those structures built you don't really have to deal with those annoyances any longer so true it may just be a the the initial survival aspect or whatever, but I, I tell you, it, it really didn't. It was incredibly annoying that during the daytime I had to be dealing with this while trying to just build a simple house. Yeah. So I don't know. It's I, I'm probably not giving it enough credit, and I and I will boot it up again and I'll try it again. I have <clears throat> two um, two other people that I play games with that actually just bought it, so I'm hoping I can get some multiplayer in, and that might be a little bit easier to deal with. Oh, I'm sure that'll be a lot more fun. Yeah, and I, after last week, I I got my house built, and uh, it was this, it was the I had the feeling that I was dealing with these uh, goos or gels coming at me, and mm-hmm. I got my house built because of that that frustration. Okay, I'm gonna I want a structure that I can go up and and deal with. But as soon as I got my house built, I saved the game and quit, and I haven't played it. <laughs> yeah, I I, I kind of felt like okay, I did that. And I need to do the push because I want to see the NPC stuff, but yeah. just I 
I just realized now as you were talking about it, I did that and then I quit and I never thought about that game again until right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, it's funny I, that we're even talking about it right now. Like as as we're talking about it, I see one of my Steam <laughs> friends pop up and it's so and so started playing Terraria. I'm like, hmm. Should ask them real quick. What do you think about Terraria? <laughs> and I've I've heard some very good things from people who are crazy and like it. No, I've I've heard some very good things. They're from crazy. <laughs> yeah, I know. I've had a friend that got it last night and he's already put. He's playing it right now. I'm watching him play it right now. He's put five hours into it. He doesn't play PC games, so he's playing it. I like know that motherfucker's crazy. <laughs> he is. <laughs> so I, I know some people really love it, but it just it didn't appeal to me immediately off the bat. It just it didn't feel very intuitive. And you were saying the GUI was slick, um, Jason, and I. Yeah. I did. I found the GUI kind of cumbersome actually it just I, I was having a hard time placing blocks maybe i'm just uncoordinated and dumb but whatever um it's it's a very specific way of how you build things in that game yeah and you know actually i i kind of feel better because if uh steve and i are, are the type that playing we enjoy minecraft i think but we'll both admit that we didn't play a ton of it i know you're one who played a lot of minecraft Oh, yeah. So I feel I feel a little bit better that you feel the same way about Terraria as, as me. Yeah, it's and it's hard not to draw a bunch of um, or bring up a bunch of comparisons between the two games. I mean, they're so they, that, they oh, it yeah. borrow so liberally, but they're so different. But you just can't help compare them. No, I, I won't. Yeah, it's not it's not a rip off. And and I think even Notch had tweeted that about Terraria that he he liked it. But yeah, mm-hmm. it's it's very, I mean, obviously inspired by it. Yeah, I'm just I'm gonna have to give it another go. So anybody out there who hates me for not liking Toria, just wait two weeks and I'll probably come back and say I love it. Yeah, or write in and tell us why you actually like it, and we will read it. Yeah, do so it. Bam. Steve. Exactly. Um. Well, what else, man? The other thing that I have been playing, and and I haven't played this for <clears throat> about a week, but it's it's definitely worth mentioning because it's very interesting. Is um, Order and Chaos Online, which yeah, is I play that too. Did you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I've been you... playing. I've been playing off and on the last couple of weeks. Oh, I had no idea. You haven't talked. To... Okay. It... We never talk anymore. Yeah. You haven't. You haven't talked about it. But <clears throat> so, ordering chaos online for those who don't know is an iOS MMORPG by the famous game studio that likes to rip off other studios' game ideas, GameLoft. But they and do it very well. They do it very well. Yeah. <laughs> no, they they deserve a lot of credit for for how well they rip things off, but. And and make them good and fun, but yeah, it, it's a so it's an MMORPG, Wi-Fi only for you know iPod Touch, iPhone, or an iPad, and it's um, high resolution. It's online and it's totally World of Warcraft for your handheld device. It is hmm. so World of Warcraft. I mean, even even the I like I, I'm playing a mage, and <laughs> the beginner staff I could identify immediately as like the beginner staff from. World of Warcraft, like the kind of design <laughs> that you know, like the circle hook at the top of that mm-hmm. of that staff. It's like, oh my god! Like I thought, I mean, are, are you think they're gonna get like, is that game gonna like not be around for forever because they're gonna get under like right uh, a lawsuit from Blizzard for likeness rights? Or? No, no. Oh, no. I sincerely doubt there's. It's it's different enough. I mean, it just okay. It, share, it does share a very similar art style i mean it doesn't look exactly like well it just it wow it just shares a very similar art style i guess gotcha. yeah, yeah. And like is there a monthly fee with it um so the way that it works when you initially purchase the app you get a free jason is it two or three months three months you get a free three month subscription and then thereafter it's like 99 cents for one month a uh, dollar 99 for three months or oh, really? 2.99 for six months which i think is the perfect subscription <laughs> model for wow. a handheld like that and I totally agree because I'm I'm tempted to just outright purchase it now, even though I'm not through my free time, just because it's so friggin' cheap and the game is fun. So, I mean, it's it's wow. So I mean, there's really not a whole lot to say, but it is incredible what they've done. I mean, they've they've created this totally open world where you can see tons of other players all around you being stupid in global chat. <laughs> oh, there's so much, there's so much global chat. Going on. <laughs> and there's so, oh, it's so dumb, but it's great. Um, it, you know, there's kill stealing and teaming up. And, and what's great about this game is they actually do make it so easy for you to team up with people. You know, you just touch them and then you like 
you team up with them and a little request comes up and you say yes and then boom you're you know you're in a group together and you're doing quests together so you know you go to npcs you get quests you go and kill you know 10 nar blacks or whatever and then you come back you turn it in you get your loot and you move on and it's just hub you know quest hub progression just like wow there's no overarching storyline really and i i would say the game suffers for that but really when you're on the go but, you... but it's a handheld yeah yeah and it's it's kind of funny because they're the kill stealing and things that would normally annoy you in a regular <laughs> mmo because uh-huh. you're playing it on a handheld you're kind of like okay you fucker that's cute <laughs> that's cute that you just did that <laughs> well and, and and the spawn time is really fast too oh, so it's, yeah, not... it's super fast and, and and people generally will group up with you i haven't really had any problems getting a group you don't really talk all that much because you know it's a handheld touch screen yeah. but you know you, people will group up with you they'll if they see you're on the same quest and you'll just do stuff the only thing that i haven't i'm level 13 right now i haven't played in like a a week or so what level are you jason I think I'm only six. Okay, so I guess what I've what I've read on like Touch Arcade, <clears throat> on the Touch Arcade forums is um, that around like level twenty three or something, the game actually forces you to begin questing in an open PvP zone. Oh, oh really? Yeah, mm-hmm. but in, in not in a good way because there's oh. no, yeah there's no sort of level rest- uh, restriction. So Fungi ganking. Yeah, it's a bunch of ganking, and people are pretty unhappy with that. They are supposedly coming out with an update that's helping fill in some quests for the for higher level that are missing and to help address this issue as well. So <clears throat> That's good. Yeah, so they're listening, I guess. They're listening to their, their player base, but this game is just blown up in popularity, and the forms are filled with the same MMO whiners, I guess you could say. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. It's it's a it's an MMO, but it's on the, on iOS or whatever, and it, think, it's amazing. Yeah, I think for the <laughs> price, I mean, it's a very low price barrier to entry. Mm-hmm. If you're six ninety nine, interested think. at all, yeah, and you get the three months of subscription uh-huh. included. And uh, Steve, I think that's one once you get your iPad. Mm-hmm. I think on the iPad, it'd be a lot better because yeah, the only major issues I've had with the UI are it's cramped on the on the phone or touch or whatever you're playing on an iPad, yeah. I would be much more interested in seeing how that experience is. By the mm-hmm. way, listeners, I'm getting an iPad. Fuck you. Yeah, there's lots of suggestions. I know. Yes, you. by the way, there is a suggestion uh, post on Multiplaying.net. I had posted something today because uh, long story short, last week we had our garbage sale <laughs> and we made a bunch of money. And from from your garbage, from our garbage that all we were selling, used rubbers. <laughs> <laughs> I ran them through the dishwasher. It was all right. That's what those yes, little prongs are for. They're fine. You have jet dry in that. <laughs> yeah, her, her jet dry helps. Oh that. yeah. Uh, where was I going? <laughs> I have no idea. This wine is good. Um, <laughs> Uh, anyways, we've made enough money off of that, and I was actually intending to use some... I sold a a old um, bass guitar and amp that I had, and I was going to use that money to buy a uh, Neo Geo cabinet. And I was... There's a story on the website as well about that, so go read that. I'm not going to explain it all here. It's heartbreaking. Uh, It is heartbreaking. The one comment... are with you. I know. The one comment I got there was a guy from Twitter, and I loved his comment that it was uh, more tragic than fucking Shakespeare. Uh, (laughs) I don't know about that, but it's pretty pretty bad. It was pretty tragic. (laughs) It was really bad. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But anyways, I didn't win it, but then I reconsidered like even getting it right now. Maybe I should wait until... Because we're going to probably move into a new house next year, so... Long story short, uh, I decided to pool the money with the garbage sale money, and we bought an iPad. So, middle of next month, uh, I should have it, but uh, until then, if you have any suggestions, if you have one, or if you played with one, go check out the site, go to multiplaying.net, and there is a post on there about uh, helping me fill up my iPad, so go there and let me know what you want, what what I should get. I tell you what, if if you're really, really sad about not getting that Neo Geo arcade cabinet. I just sent you a link to the iCade, which is yeah. an iPad arcade cabinet. Yeah. <laughs> Next night actually... after I ordered it, I was looking at that. That is so oh, cool. There yeah, was a pretty... review on, I think, a Touch Arcade that was uh-huh. pretty positive. Yeah. Yeah, they really enjoyed it. So it's even got the cool wood paneling and everything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's pretty it comes, sweet. It's got like, the thing is 100 bucks, 
and I think there's like a dozen or so games that you can get for free with it. But then if you spend, I think it's like 10 or 15 bucks on the App Store, there's like 100 games that you can get that work with yeah, it. Yeah, it's an Atari app, I think, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, it is yeah. like the Atari official collection, but it works with that. And yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. I, most, I, not not all, every game they said works with it, but most of them do. Right. I'm I'm definitely considering it because that looks very cool. Uh, and and they're for, for, the API, too, so they should you should be able to get... Or other games, hopefully, will support it in the future. Too. I really hope they do. I hope there's enough demand for it. Um, I'm definitely considering it. Like I said, it's a hundred bucks. It is a full like mini tabletop cabinet. That if you have not seen it already, <laughs> Pro- promise me if you get that, like you'll be a like you'll be a like Cracker Barrel and just whip it. <laughs> oh, totally, man! I'll take it for the kids to play on. <laughs> Oh, that would be awesome! Oh, god, yeah. It's uh, for, for if you haven't seen it, it, is a like tabletop that you actually just put your iPad as the screen on the front, uh, and then drop the top on it to like cl- enclose it, and then you have a, a stick, and then I think it's six buttons, six or eight buttons. Eight. Um, is it eight? Okay. Eight, yeah. So there's a potential for some Street Fighter. And uh, anyways, uh. Oh God! Would it be awesome if the Street Fighter? So but it's awesome. portrait only. It's not. You uh, can't have the landscape. But still, and... I mean, I mean, it all depends on how <laughs> developers use that. You can yeah. still do a Street Fighter app. Mm-hmm. You could that. put the landscape picture within that. I would imagine. So right. And then maybe put like in the uh, gaps on the top and the bottom. Put the uh, the meters and then um, like the, a move list. Or if they don't, I picture yeah. Steve laying it sideways and like trying to look at <laughs> like. <laughs> with the buttons <laughs> vertically laying in bed or on the table at Cracker Barrel yeah <laughs> oh, yeah you can ever see a Cracker Barrel he just gets that stupid pet game out of there and hey. lay it down and play it hey put more put more logs on the fire yeah <laughs> bring oh. me some of those apples and spices <laughs> you even got a coin slot I like it I know it's it's pretty awesome. sweet I want it it's like a hundred bucks and it's not that bad so I, I, I do that so I recommend you you get that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but if anybody else has any suggestions for games for that, uh, go check it out. Go check out the post and let me know. The um, cool thing about that post, just real quick, is I was looking through there. Like, there's lots of shit. Even if you have an iPhone, go check out that thread. Mm-hmm. So totally really good ideas of things that I didn't even realize. So I right. was and I'm, and I'm totally gonna. Uh, eventually, like over the course of this week, because there's already a bunch of shit on there. I hope to. Uh, update that and actually put most of those suggestions in the post and I'll probably link to the app store. Mm-hmm. That'd be badass. So that's because yeah, it looked like it was working pretty well. So yeah, I want to do that. But uh back to you Dean. Nothing about <laughs> me and my my iPad. Uh what is there anything else you've been playing? No. Okay. No. I just I do suggest you do it, get order in Chaos Online if you can. It, it's Oh, I will. It, sure. It works so well casually as a handheld so and it's it's just amazing what they did so yeah sweet uh jason yeah drinking that drink i was god damn it (laughs) (laughs) ah you bitch (laughs) uh you drinking your guinness like thick delta burke anyways uh (laughs) anyways uh (laughs) what have you been playing rest in peace (laughs) <laughs> okay, going back, she is she she is dead, right? Is she really? No, I don't think she's dead. We had dead, this discussion dude. last week, didn't we? Not about Delta Burst. About stop, stop saying people are dead. Hold on, I'm I'm pulling her up. No, she's totally, she's totally not dead. <laughs> oh, God damn it. Quit killing people, man. Her and, her and James Garner. <laughs> she's <laughs> only 54. Yeah. Okay, who was it that just died from uh, Designing Women? I don't fucking know. Like a year or two ago. I don't. I think that was the other one. The other. I, one I never show. watched that show. I just know someone died from it. So I think the guy that like, played nervous. Hollywood for Mannequin still alive? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> because the guy that played Hollywood on the movie Mannequin, he was the the dude on uh, Designing Women. I've never seen that. Oh, movie. that dude! I, yes. You know what? I think he did die. Did someone died from that. I don't know. <laughs> you, you could mention anyone oh, who was man. ever on Designing Women, and that would be yeah, he's dead. Yeah, they're dead. Yeah, they're dead. Because, they're dead. Someone did die from that show just recently, like, I mean, probably yes, last year or two. But uh, I, I have no idea what their name is, so I should probably shut up. But it was it was either a man or woman who once appeared on Designing Woman is dead. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thoughts and prayers. 
That's all I can think of. But yeah, condolences to the family. Oh, yeah, God. to but, his or her family. <laughs> but what, their, what have you? What have you been playing? I've been playing. Uh, I picked up Dirt Three today. Oh, you bastard! I'll, I, I will have that either next week or the week after. You, so, you should. You should have that. It's really how was good. It? How was it? It's really, really good. Oh, I'm, ig- I'm ignorant. I have a really quick question. Yeah. Is it is it rally or street? What is it? No, it's, it's actually rally. about dirt. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, okay. Just about it's a, like a cultivating. Yeah, it's like you just you just like pat you just pat dirt, like oh. to uh, you know kind of like, supports uh, the move and the connect. Do you ever see like medieval movies where someone like they show people working and there's always like one person just patting some dirt, trying to appear <laughs> appear busy when they're not really doing anything? Like Monty that's, Python and Quest yeah, of the that's, Holy that's what this game is. It's like you're that guy who just like pats dirt and you're trying not to get noticed. Okay. Yeah, I- I'm listening. You, yes. you got my you got my attention. Yeah. Well, that's it. That's it. Oh, I shouldn't really have your attention because I'm trying to appear <laughs> just busy without being noticed. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look at me. Yeah. I'm I hate it when the, you look at me. I'm I'm patting the stirrup. Yeah. <laughs> Stop looking at me with those hungry eyes. Yeah. But anyways, how is it's a rally game, yeah, but okay. it also has uh, as far as at least the second one, I'm sure the third one's probably the same, but it was a uh it had rally and it had get Gymkhana and which was like stunt driving and then it had like some other off-road type stuff. But what is it? Like, did you play the second one? I pl- only played the demo of it. Okay. I always wanted to get it, but I just never picked it up. I really enjoyed the demo. Oh, I own so- Dirt 1 and Dirt 2. <laughs> what oh the my- fuck? Oh my god. <laughs> On what Steam? Yeah, I have them in my Steam list. Uh, I'm like, oh, okay. You buy them on sales and you just never played them. No, it says 52 minutes. Last played 5 27 2010. <laughs> wow. Sorry. <laughs> okay, I'm done. I'll just shut up now. So, how is Dirt Three, Jason? I, I'm I've only played about an hour and a half of it, but I really enjoy it. Graphics look good. Oh, graphics look awesome in that game. Did you get it on the PS3? Yes. All right. I want yeah. it. Yeah, I think yes. you would dig it, especially got, if you love Dirt 2. I got the wheel, too. Yeah, and you do have the wheel, yeah. I thought about getting on the PC, but, I mean, racing games, typically I like on a console. Right, yeah, me too. Um, but hopefully, either end of next week or the week after, I will own that. So It's a bummer that there is no um, competitive driving on PS3. And it keeps it keeps teasing you when you boot it up to uh, okay redeem your online pass, and it directs you to the PlayStation Store. Oh, and it keeps like making you feel bad that you haven't done it. <laughs> Either redeem it or buy one. Come on. Why haven't you done it? Fuck! I bought it new. Yeah, I can't redeem it. So, and uh, <laughs> one thing that kind of annoyed me that I saw in a story, I think on Joystick, um, that. They they can't just do like Mortal Kombat did where they waive the online pass really? because it's hard coded into the game. So oh. they said it would require a patch to do it. And they said it wasn't worth working on the patch because by the time they got the patch ready, the store would be back up, which I think it's dumb because there's no guaranteeing that. They should be working <laughs> on a patch to make that shit free. Because they totally said that it was going to be up this past Tuesday. Exactly. Yeah. They sent out emails to publishers saying it was going to be online this past Tuesday. So right now, okay, you haven't been working on the patch now. The shit's not ready. You're not working on it yet. So we're fucked. I don't (laughs) know. But uh, the game is really, really good. Other than that. My only problem with the beginning of that game Mm -hmm. is, uh, and I don't know how the exact structure of the second one, I played the demo and it kind of, I think, teased how the structure was. It takes a long time to get game uh rate to actual racing once you boot up the game really yeah there's like there's a lot of uh verbal parts that they they lay out to you where they explain the game and you can't skip it and uh i don't don't remember that in the second one but i don't know it's been a while since i had started the game i remember the menus that's about it yeah the menus are pretty slick like you were in this camper and you Mm -hmm. had you can like walk around the camper and see yeah yeah that's all that's all gone oh Oh. really yeah, which That's, I I man. thought was an awesome part of that first one. None of this yeah. anymore. It's kind of just okay. They like talk to you like here's your mechanic and here here's the introductory person and here's the person who's gonna tell you how to select a race and pick what team you want and it's all menus. Which hmm. 
I kind of was bummed because that part was in the demo and I liked it in, the, in Dirt 2. <laughs> um, but the actual racing is really good. But I do recommend... Um, I'm one who's not great at racing games, so when it when it puts the default difficulty out to you in the beginning, it puts it on casual. So I, I was like, okay, well, I'll do that. And it, it's assists and everything. But that shit is way too assisted. Oh, like you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bump it up to normal when I play tomorrow. Yeah. But uh, you, it basically you never have to hit the brake button. You can just hit the gas oh, and just like steer, and like you can tell this shit is doing everything for you, and, and you'll come in first, which is not fun at all. Right. And for someone like me who is a really is a casual racing fan, that mm-hmm. was not fun. So wow. I mean, for my son, he was playing it. He was digging it. And That's a good point, man. I put my kids on that. That'd be great. Oh, yeah. The, the, I mean, he really he did well, and he was having fun. But, uh, yeah, I, I think they should have a different word than casual. It should be kid or something. But uh, <laughs> Kid. But jack it up to normal. I mean, you'll have more fun that way. And I'm this is coming from someone who is not good at racing games, but uh, it was it's more fun to do it that way and actually get better at the game because... But as I'm playing on casual, I could see I'm not going to learn anything from this way of playing. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Bummer. But, I mean, you will no, check the out game, the normal. The and great. Yeah. The game is really, really well done. Cool. I, I'm excited. I want it. Um, anything else? I've been playing some Brink, actual playing with live players. What? Yeah, I know. <laughs> how is you it with live that? players? I still haven't even played yet, but how is it with live players? Yeah. Feel bad for you, but um, there's another patch today, and I haven't got to check it out. So maybe, 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 maybe uh, probably not. But maybe, but yeah, probably not. <laughs> I don't know. I I kind of feel bad saying this. I, it's a lot of fun <laughs> with <sighs> with all real players. God damn it! And I don't think it's here's here's the thing. As I was playing, I don't think it's worth fifty dollars. It's oh. kind of more like a multiplayer only, like twenty thirty bucks. Oh, gotcha. Down. But um. I don't, it's a lot of fun. It's fun seeing what people do with the movement stuff and reading reviews and hearing people talk about how that's really kind of minimized from what Splash Damage sold it as or Bethesda sold, mm-hmm. how you could move around, which is true. I The biggest issue I have with that game is how over how overhyped they sold that game. Yeah. You know, they, they talked about how You'll never know, you know, who you, if you're playing against a real person or a fake person in the campaign. Like they made the campaign out right. to be sort of really immersive type of thing, which when it's not that at all. Yeah, I mean, yeah that's that's what, that's the bummer that really sold me is that they were saying, yeah, you can the single player will be, uh, you can gain experience just from single just from playing single player like you can on multiplayer, even though you get bumped when you play multiplayer. Um, uh, you bumped up in your experience amount, but they said you can get experience from single player because it's just like playing the the multiplayer. And I'm like, well, shit, that sounds awesome. But then you go yeah. and find out the AI is total shit. And it and it's only scenario maps. Yes. it's not it's not a real campaign. I mean, no, they, it's not. They throw like an intro and an outro cutscene in there, but that shit. You skip it all the time exactly. because it doesn't mean anything. And yeah, because the first time I did boot it up, even though it was like laggy as hell, watching the intro sequence was just like this is it's nothing. It's just fluff. Yeah, it's like thirty seconds of bullshit that doesn't matter at all. And that that's the part that makes me the most mad about that game is they they presented it as something that it is clearly not. Yeah. And besides that, I mean, I'm having fun with the game. It's weird because I'm almost thinking I'm I'm mad because I'm having fun with that game. <laughs> and, I mean that's bullshit, but when you play the whole game with actual people, the game's pretty fun. Yeah. And it's 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 and seeing the how people in the actual campaign, the moving stuff is pretty minimized. Like it doesn't really matter when you're jumping around with bots and stuff. You kind of forget that you can do that parkour type of thing. Oh, right. But when you actually play with real people, it is pretty awesome to see. Like when I was playing yesterday, one of my teammates ran by me when we were getting, um, we were getting like kind of barricaded in the spot that we we're trying to protect. And then one of my teammates kind of ran by me as I'm like trying to hold down this area, 
and slid and started shooting at the people and they couldn't hit him because he was like minimized mm-hmm. and took out like two guys and we took back the area. <laughs> like that nice. that stuff is pretty sweet. And I and I think if if other people play the actual just multiplayer component of it within a team that works together, mm-hmm. it's it's pretty fun. I mean, it's not going to save that game from being misrepresented and probably sold for way too high of a price, but I don't know. It's okay. All right. Yeah. I'm, I don't, I, I, I don't want to ex- oversell it to people. Right. I, it is what it is. Like, well, you were saying that you were mad about, like, how it's good. I, are you mad about how it's good, or are you mad because it's good for what they... They sold you on the wrong thing. They sold me on the wrong thing, and it was... They they oversold. I mean, I shouldn't have paid fifty. I don't think I paid fifty dollars for it, but I paid forty. Yeah, um, it it shouldn't have been a full price game, right? For yeah. what it was, it should All have right. been like a Team Fortress Two type of experience, right. basically. That's cool. That's another game that I kind of think as I'm playing it, I could go play Team Fortress Two. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. I so. I think what sold me on the game more than anything that they said, um. And it's it's crushing me to not be able to play it. Is the big honestly the biggest thing that sold me was the art style, just the style of the game. I, the look, I really like that stuff. The I mean, look it of looks, it is phenomenal. Kind of looks like that European like soccer hooligan type well, of look. Yeah, I I, I kind of saw it and like especially some of the mechs and, or not mechs but some of like the um, the robot type stuff that they had in the game. I was looking at everything and some of the design elements was like, man, if they would modernize the game Metal Slug. Yeah, <gasps> that's what yep. it would be. Yep. Yeah, I totally that, see that. That that look. Now, that's what I want them to do now is take the engine that you used in Brink, fix the shit for the people that use cards like mine, and then do a 2D version of Metal Slug with that graphics. That'd be awesome. Yep. I totally see that. Do it. Yeah. Do it. Do it now. You would sell a fucking bazillion copies. Yep. Bazillion. It's mm. real that's, words, but anyway, that's a real number. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This this wine says so. How was uh, what else have you been playing? Uh, I've been playing Metro twenty thirty three. Really, last couple of days. Yeah, what? I got on, I got on a Steam sale maybe like a month ago for like five bucks or something like that. What? It was five bucks. It was either five or it was somewhere five to ten. It might have been like seven fifty or something. Is that oh, the fuck that? But if it was five, <laughs> I don't think the... it, I don't think it was five, but it was less than ten. I do remember being super cheap. Yeah. Which I've been waiting for that game to drop, and I picked it up, and I didn't get a chance to play it till a couple of days ago. So I've been playing it the last couple of days. Is that the DX11 one? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Do you it have does a... have a D- I yeah I do, and I have it on there, and it looks gorgeous. Okay. That game looks fantastic, and uh, let me tell you, that game, <clears throat> fucking awesome. Really? really? That game has blown me away. That has been like a surprise. A very, very pleasant surprise. I'm not super far, but god damn, that game does hmm. a lot of things that we talked about Crisis 2 being kind of like Half-Life. Yeah. I think this game does that way better than Crisis. Really? Yes. That's, wow. Hmm. There, there, it is so immersive and it paints this like, I'm not going to do spo- a ton of spoilers because I'm not really far in the game, so I don't think it really fucking matters, but right. um, it's the, came the out basic, last year. Yeah, the basic the basic story is there is a uh, y- you are human survivors in kind of an apocalypse where there is some w- weird creatures that inhabit the surface. Mm-hmm. So the beginning has you going out from these tunnels and going out into the surface, and it, it it's hard to describe just the level of detail involved in this game to where when you go out. You can't breathe the normal air, so you have to put on a gas mask where one of your buttons will make you look at your wristwatch to see how much time you have left on your gas mask. Hmm. And and your gas mask will obstruct your view, so you will see, like, as you're looking left and right, you'll see a clear field of view, but on the, on the, on the borders, it's, it's obstructed because you are looking through it on a mask. And uh, the, the creatures that will come by whenever you fire you have a very you have a very limited supply of ammo so it's not unlimited and the level of detail like when you when you put up to iron sights you can actually see like there you have this little mini gun you can see the bullets going 
on the clip to your to your left <laughs> as they're going down you can like okay i have to reload not because i know it but because i can see that oh, i'm wow. running out of ammo on it That's and then cool. when you and when you go back into your they have a really cool sequence after this beginning intro which is kind of des- designed to show you some of the action that you'll see you're back underneath with the society living and you can actually see how they are surviving so you will see kids, you'll see families, you'll see a, you know males that kind of direct you, and you'll go through and see they have like pigs and tiny little pens, mm-hmm. and they're like giving you food, but you can see how they get food that way, mm-hmm. and and you have they have people that you sell well, or buy ammo and gear and stuff, and uh, it does a really good job of that same type of half life where. It's first person. They never break that, and it, it's very immersive how your your view goes as you're getting into vehicles or talking to people, right. and they'll come in and wake you up out of bed. Hmm. Um, God, and and there's the the weapon stuff. It's hard to describe, but it's really really um, well done to where you have like a double barrel shotgun, and you have to use both of your if you're playing with the account, which I've messed around with the keyboard and the console, I'm playing on a PC, but I, I play with the keyboard and plug in 360 controller just kind of see how it works. Mm-hmm. Um, like if you're playing on 360 controller, left and right trigger are like the left barrel of the shotgun and the right barrel of the shotgun. They and feel you, pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Like it feels pretty visceral. Really, yeah. And it, kind of adding to that, when you look at your objectives, like if you're playing with a controller, you have to select to bring up on your right hand, you'll bring up a clipboard. and your left hand, you'll bring up a lighter. So mm. if you're in a dark area, you have to hold down the left trigger to make the the lighter light up and the right trigger to bring up the actual clipboard so you can see in your writing what your objective is. Oh, huh. interesting. Wow. Huh. That's That does sound neat. And uh, other little touches, like if you have a flashlight that you can light up, but if... if you're in a lot of dark areas because you're in tunnels and things. And uh, if that's not enough, you have this little like hand generator that you can crank, which you light up your your flashlight. And then you actually have to bring up the uh, hand generator into your inventory because you're holding it, and you have to crank it, you know, like <laughs> with the action button to mm-hmm. make it work. Which you can't have a weapon going while you're doing that. I don't know. Sounds kind of stressful. <laughs> oh, it, exactly. I mean. It, there's a lot of anxiety, but God, they do such a a good job of, there was a part where in the beginning, you're kind of riding this underground rail with a team, with a bunch of, you know, your friends who are trying to transfer from one area to another. Yeah. It's very Russian. Yeah. (laughs) Like like you, uh, you are in that um, rail with Boris, you know, one of your friends. (laughs) So you get attacked. His last name's not bad enough, is it? Yeah. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't know. I, was, I wasn't paying attention. But uh, they all kind of fall asleep during that part, and you're trying to save them. And, uh, like, you know, that's when you get the double-air shotgun, and they're all all these creatures are just assaulting the little mine cart. And it, it was really, I mean, there was a great part where I was fending them off, and two out of the four, it was like four of us, me included, Two of the guys had passed out, and I was trying to save, and the other guy's, like, yelling, to, like, pointing them out to me. And I was mowing these guys down, and there was a point where one of the creatures overwhelmed me, and I'm like, okay, I fucked up. I died. Because it was getting pretty hairy, and I, I was uh, having a hard try, hard time uh, fighting them. And I, I got belted off the mine cart, and I'm like, okay, here's where I die. But it didn't. Like, I kind of recovered, and it kind of showed as I'm looking all these creatures are assaulting the thing. And then I walk back out and I'm like, okay, what, what's going on? There's like this light down at the end of the tunnel and I'm walking that way. And like the rest of my team has woken up and they're like, get him in the fucking car. Like, and I want, I run up and the guy grabs my hand, vaults me in there. And then the one guy has woken up and just has a flamethrower and is laying waste to them. Hmm. And then the next scene, I'm in the bar and I'm drinking vodka with them. And it's very like you never break that field of view. You don't see your character. So you're seeing the point of view as I'm drinking. Like, and it really hammered home the, you know, they're all talking about what had happened. And I got, I was able to get up and walk away and go, 
up to the bartender and, and talk to him and stuff. But they were still talking at the table about what had happened. Wow. Interesting. Like, God, it, was, it was like, okay, this is – like it's really drawing me into that world. They're talking about what had happened and what when it actually happened. You know, I thought I was dead. Uh, God, that game is so good. So wow. interesting. I'm and I'm not far into it. I'm probably an hour and a half into the game. But yeah. um, next uh, next Steam sale, I might have to uh, keep an eye out for that. I, I think you would really dig it. Hmm. I, I it, often thought about it. And the last time that it was on sale, I think I think I had uh, was upset if I remember correctly because I had bought something. They were having like a couple sales or whatever, and I had bought something, and then like the next day or whatever, that showed up on sale. I'm like. God damn it. I think it was at the end of like some big, one of I those big was. sales they had, yeah. and I, I just bought it because I had been waiting for it, and I don't yeah. think I bought anything else that, but God, I I don't know. Uh, it, the game looks phenomenal. And it's only 20 bucks right now, but yeah, next time it's on sale, I'll definitely uh, yeah. pick that up. Yeah, tweet yeah. that shit. Yeah. Yep. yep. Um, but awesome. Is there anything else you've been playing? Um, I have been playing a little. I bought today the guy, the game that you guys are going to talk about next. Oh, did you? I did. <laughs> what what platform? Uh, PS3. Okay. The only thing, I mean, I'll let you guys say what you want to say about it, but um, I'm not that far. But the facial animation, we're talking about LA, LA Noir. Mm-hmm. But uh, I, I'm enjoying it, but mm-hmm. I kind of think there's overacting with the facial stuff. It's fucking weird. The, the acting has been part of my problem, and this this is what's going to be weird. Okay, this is, like starts the official like LA Noir talk part of the podcast. Um, I feel weird wanting to talk about it now because there's so much shit that I want to say about it. Mm-hmm. But knowing that you just started, Jason, oh, I don't you. care. Don't worry about it. I oh, no 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 not as far as spoilers. I don't want to have you. Because a lot of times, like, if someone... I have a hard time reading reviews for games if I haven't played them. Like, if I have a general idea from, like, people I follow on Twitter, like, oh, this game's fucking awesome, then sure, I'll I'll buy into that because I know, I know people on there well enough that I know their opinions. But, like, I can't read reviews because if I read too much into it, even if the person... That, that's that person's opinion and I understand that, they can... The things that I read on there may point out things of the game that I may have otherwise not have seen. Yeah. That's my big problem with I I, I want to talk about the game because I will be just frank right now. I it's up to you if you want me to continue explaining why, but I uh have not beat the game. I got to I believe the last desk that you hold in the game. Um unless I I could totally be wrong. I got to the arson desk and I completed one case. Wait, have you gone to Mexico yet? <laughs> This girl was awesome, wasn't it? (laughs) (laughs) I got to the I got to the arson desk and I completed one case and I sent it off for trade into Amazon today. Wow. Okay. I'm done with that game. I think I I might burn out on it, but when I was out at the store today, it's kind it's a game I have to play because of my interest and yes, and I, I, I think you are more into adventure games than I am straight up so I think it might be more up your alley but I don't know how to say this but it might be more of a problem with just me I got a a very big taste of what that game was by that time and I was just kind of getting bored with it is it part I mean partly because rocks are I I don't want to say this is a bad thing but they make long ass games that's Okay, if this game was, like, maybe 10 hours. If that was a 10-hour game, I would have been blown the fuck away. Yeah. Um, I don't I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, throw that against them because that's not a, I mean, we always want more of what we like, but yes. they have a history of making just long-ass games. Yes, and here's my problem. I didn't, I was tempted to not trade it in because of the problem that I had in Red Dead, that it was so long and I quit and went back and I ended up finishing it. The finish of the game sold me. I, I, I that game that was my game of the year for last you year. Had to, you had to work your ass off for that. Yes, it. But it was the ending was fucking amazing. Elie Noir could equally be as amazing, but I don't know because I I haven't seen it because I quit. But I will say, 
that it is still so far one of the most amazing games that I've played this year because of how it's doing things and because of how it's twisted on the adventure game style and because of the technology and because of they took a huge chance with the era and the type of game. It's so much more adult than most games are, and I love them for that. I love so many things about the game. I'm blown away by it, except for the actual quote-unquote game part of it. I don't like. Mm. I, well, I wouldn't say I wouldn't even say that I don't like it. I got sick of it. It well, it does get boring. Not even how, boring. How far are you, Dean? I um I'm on the I'm in homicide. Well, currently, that's, that's still that was still my favorite part of the game so far. So yeah, and I'm um I just I just fucked up on a case like so bad that I have to restart it, and that's one thing that I don't. This game isn't. If you're a perfectionist, don't play this game. <laughs> like, okay, do not do they, play it. Do they make you restart, or are you just doing no. that out of? Okay. I'm doing it out of. I'm doing it out of. The so, natural gamer tendency to do things. <clears throat> well, so okay, I'm going to make one quick comparison. No, this, no, no. Go ahead. This, this is totally like out of left field. All right. So, Jason, a long time ago, you played Demon Souls, yes. and you said that that game is hard, but you know that when you fuck up, it's always your fault. Because right. you didn't, you didn't. It controls well, and you didn't do the controls right, or you were rushing, or you were doing whatever. Mm-hmm. So, and this might sound vindictive, but when I play LA Noir, I, I think you know I'm going through these interrogations, and I'm supposed to read these people, and I don't know if it's because I, I can't read people or what. But I am, I have the like Steve was saying last week. I fuck up. I have the hardest time, and I, I have the hardest time interpreting what I'm supposed to do. Uh, I don't know whether the game wants me to say truth or doubt. It just seems it there's seems so many hard. variables there that it's it's impossible. Mm-hmm. And it, and it, it feels like the it's the game's fault for making me not have a good time. <laughs> oh, I know. And it, you know, I was thinking as I'm playing the intro, and they like very obviously show that first girl lie, and they kind I of fucked up on it. it. And and well, you you fucked up on the intro. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> so, you did too. Yay! Yeah, Steve did too. I fucked up on it because I didn't. I didn't think that's what they were going for. Well, I mean, it's it's I mean, because they're that's you. It's not black and white. And I'm even thinking as I'm playing. God, I'm a psychologist, and I'm gonna fuck up in this game. Yeah. And I'm gonna be. I'm gonna go to work and be like, I don't know. I don't know why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> because, Doubt. Because you. So, I mean, you can't that type of game. You can't do it to where it's a right or wrong. I mean, they're they're putting something out there, and the, you you're gonna pick up on different animations. You're gonna pick up on different cues and everything. And there's it's only right or wrong to the person developing that game. It's only obvious to that person. Yeah, or I just want to say, people. Dean, exactly what you said mm-hmm. about not really understanding what choices to make, especially in the interviews and interrogations based on their facial animations, based on what they tell you. Mm -hmm. That is my absolute biggest problem with the game. That's what kind of... the, The first case that I did in Arson, I fucked up. And I totally thought I was doing everything right. Mm hmm And I totally fucked it up in the end uh, everything going up to that point was perfect and in the last part of the the interrogations it was I totally fucked it up and I could and I, and I, ha- I thought that I had the right evidence and I was saying the right thing but I still fucked it up that mixed with the fact that no, it doesn't seem like no matter how bad I fuck up the story is still going to progress the same way it mm-hmm. does. It, that's the thing that drew, like after that, and then like the, when I started the next case, I kind of said, "Hmm, it does not matter what the fuck I do in this game. It's still going to progress on its own." It felt like I was. The only reason I felt like I was continuing to play it was because the story was so good. Mm. The well, and, I, and I'm going back to what I said. The actual quote unquote game part. I didn't like because there was it didn't feel like I was playing a game. Did yeah? I, I know Steve, you didn't play it, but uh, Dean, did you play Heavy Rain? Oh yeah, I've I played through that twice, and okay. when I when I'm playing L.A. Noire, I, I I keep on thinking, God, I, I just kind of want to go back and play Heavy Rain again. <laughs> you know, we should uh, we all we should name rename this podcast. Like, I wish I, <laughs> I wish I could play, but um, that that kind of answers my question. Because Heavy Rain, Heavy Rain, very similarly. 
you you play it and it unfolds how it unfolds. You're not. It's designed to not go back and and retry things. Wait, yeah, but but isn't it isn't it in Heavy Rain though? And again, I'm not the person that played it, but isn't it in Heavy Rain that de- depending on things that you do in that game, can't like characters die or not oh, die? Yeah, and that's yeah. what I bring that up oh. with. It, you don't have that f- sense of feeling in this game apparently because Heavy Rain is very much your story, how you play it. It mm-hmm. kind of sounds La Noir is it, it's a story and you're going to play it and it's mm-hmm. going to end the same way. Right. And I but guess my, my other question is: You talk about the story being very good, mm-hmm. and uh, it sounds like you are kind of near the end of it. I mean, you haven't beat the game, but is this, I think I was probably is, six to eight hours away at the most. Ugh, are you serious? No, that's like if I was to take my time because I was going through it kind of slow. I was doing most of the driving and shit, just oh. like in Red Dead. Most people did the transport shit. I did all the horse riding in that. Oh. I did all that. I just I, I wanted that immersion. I went. I was with John. You did like, all the poops. I did all the poops. <laughs> I was. I was with John. Oh. I I always make my partner drive. But what I found out yesterday is if you make your partner drive, which they introduce as a completely valid way of getting around, mm-hmm. you can actually you can miss out on different um not like side quests but different pieces of information like in the one that I just played um. I couldn't figure there was one specific piece that I was missing and I couldn't figure out what was going on. And you know how, if you make your partner drive, there will be exposition and other information that's provided to you. Well, in this particular case, you had to get in, you had to drive and you had to wait until the dispatch gave you information. Hmm. And, and that pissed me off because they, they introduced this as a totally valid way to play the game for people who may be more fans of adventure games, don't want to drive around, want a more linear story and you know just to get get through the fun stuff and and I'm missing out on part of the game which I which I was really annoyed with which is and one of the and it bugged out on me too and I that's one of the reasons I have to restart this damn case hmm. but my my other question we talked about the story I mean do you guys feel that this story does it I mean does it all kind of overarch to one I would assume that all these cases would add up to one big story that comes together at the end is there that sense that there is this big story the back story does like in each of the desks that you attend to during the game they all like there's things going on that all tend they're between that and there's also like every time you see the a newspaper you can pick it up and then you see mm-hmm. this like little video of something going on as a side story with this uh doctor mm-hmm and there's also in between each of the uh, uh, cases, you get a flashback to when your character was in the war. All three, like the stuff going on as you're the detective, the stuff from the war and the, the doctor stuff, all that stuff starts to link up later on in the game. Is it good? That's the thing. It's fucking great. It's mm-hmm. awesome. Okay. That, that's what the one thing I'm kind of bummed out. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna see it to see how it pans out because it's it got especially right before the arson desk shit gets really interesting Hmm. but i think the game just started to and again i want to caveat that this is me because i'm sure there is tons of fucking people out there that will appreciate this game for every bit and like like you jason i you will probably enjoy it more than i did but for me personally the actual gameplay was not satisfying and it drove it actually drove me away from wanting to play because because it was taking me so long to see the tor- story pieces and those huge gobs of time that I was spending playing something that I didn't enjoy. Huh. And one of the one of the things that I don't enjoy, and I, I hate to sound like I'm bagging on it because I I have been I've been coming back to it on a regular basis and actually yeah, playing that's what it. Sucks. It's like we're bagging on it, but it's st- it is so good. Yeah, it's uh, the the biggest issue that i have is it's just an annoyance is when you when you're going around and trying to investigate a scene and you are looking for clues what really what really annoys me is that you have to literally like bump up against the wall all the time and then you it's hard to get the point it's hard to get the clue so like you have to always you know hit the a button or whatever it is on the PS3, right when it vibrates and then half the time it's a piece of evidence that doesn't even matter and it, it feels like a it just 
I don't know. It, it's not fun searching for that crap. I don't know. It's just not not that it would make sense, uh, but it almost needed a uh, zoom and in sort of like Batman Arkham Asylum detective vision. I agree. Sort of thing instead get, of having gamey. to walk around, huh? More gamey. Yeah, there needed to be something else with that. I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm very earlier in that stuff, but I, I did really enjoy the the. I like the audio stuff in that game. The the cue. Not when you fail. <laughs> no, and I'm yeah. and I'm not to that point yet. So I'm sure I'm gonna begin to hate it. But I really like the cues that they give you and clues, and I don't. It really sets that game very early on. Sets a very nice. Tone yeah. To... Oh God, dude. The period and the what what constantly and I'm and I not exaggerating constantly because even like twelve, fourteen hours into the game, I would still pull up to a building and be looking even at like random houses and random buildings. I would be driving by and like if I was to slow up near one, the fucking just the detail in the environment is just was it's amazing. Mm-hmm. I'm, it, it's so much about that. It's just, just, it's ama- it, uh What's the word I'm looking for? It's just like awe inspiring that how well they mapped everything out, and then the character interactions and the voice and just the the music setting. It, everything just works so well. Mm-hmm. I kind of feel like Rockstar has this um, kind of way to do things that, for most of people that I know and me, like they do great games. Just games that I don't always want to finish. <laughs> yeah. That's the, Which, I, exactly what you said earlier. If it was a 10-hour game, 10 or 12-hour game... Yeah, they... And they it, yeah. If they need they to have, have someone come in and, and shave half the time off those games. That's the kicker, though, is that they practically did shave half the time off the game versus, another like, a lot of other Rockstar games. Well, this is kind of a, a weird game compared to other Rockstar games is... Mm-hmm. From what, I mean, you guys could argue it's very linear compared to the other. Very, game. yeah. It, it's it definitely. It was. Is. It's a huge. It's a huge change for them in that regard, and it's. It works in so many ways, but, but it's still too long. But it's still too long. That's the fucked up part. I think what I'm gonna do is just and the. It, I'm just gonna bust out a walkthrough, probably just so that I can get through it. And I know right. that sounds sacrilege, but. Well, Dean, oh. um, you know, you're someone like me who is super into adventure games. Would you yeah. like to see this style of 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 the game translated to other adventure games, or would you? I mean, is this just its own thing? It it was reminding me. It was funny because la- last week you were talking about you were asking if it reminded you of Police Quest, and right to be to be honest, I can barely remember Police Quest. Two, and then I played like a little bit of four, but I was brought back to that because there's a lot of investigative stuff and a lot of. It, it, there are some similarities there. I I would like to see more of this in an adventure game format, sure, where there's investigation, interrogation, and s- stuff like that. Yeah, it would be fun. Well, it, it it's it, at its heart, it's totally a freaking adventure game. It's not. It's not. It's like you guys said. It's nothing like Rockstar's done before, and it's it's flat out an adventure game, is what it is, with a bunch yep. of foot chases. <laughs> yeah. No. God. So many chases. fucking foot so chases. So many foot chases. <laughs> like that's the, we... I, I, that's the other part that bugged me is that how rinse and repeat everything was. Is that it's it was. Repetitive. It's you're doing a foot chase, then you're doing a car chase, then you're doing. Uh, I mean, it's, every there's like five elements of the game as far as the quote unquote gameplay goes, and you do them over and over and over. Well, like in that in that very first foot chase in the tutorial, I was immediately reminded how awkward Rockstar's controls are. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And there's even like there was one uh, again, not to bum on. Like, rem- reminder: I actually liked it for a lot of reasons. Um, <laughs> but there was like even one where you're uh, trying to run away from something. I'm not going to explain what because it'll kind of ruin it. What? 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 No, I'm not telling you. Okay. Cause you have you haven't even seen it yet. So, um, oh, but okay. you're trying to run from something happening, and like the whole time, it seems like you're going to have to switch up what you're doing or whatever. Like I'm like paying real close attention to the screen, like watching, like okay, where am I going to have to go? And you just run in a straight line. Oh, that's that's dumb. it. I'm just like that was it. I was just running in a straight line. It was kind of the what was happening was cool, but it was like okay. So so I got I got to know and. I don't think this is going to be a spoiler, but so I, I'm on homicide and I'm on the, I think it's the fourth or fifth case. I, I don't know. Um, 
it's okay. So the the question is that finally, as I'm going through all of these homicides, there's some more information coming out and it's starting to look like there's a trend, an overarching sort of something that's going on. And my question is, does it pay off or are they just going to keep stringing me along? Oh, it pays off. Good. Okay, good. Cause it's, I'm going, cause that's what's, that's what's so good about this game is that I, 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 I'm like, okay, I have all this stuff. I've got all the evidence. I'm putting these dudes away, but something is fucking fishy and I need to know what it is. And it's tapping into that whole like exploratory investigative, Mm -hmm. you know, piece in, in my head or whatever. And I'm like, I gotta know. I gotta know. The whole end of the homicide desk is by far my favorite part of the game that I had played. Um, it just, it, everything works so well with that. But then like the opposite, and I think what kind of drove me away was the end of the vice wasn't to me as satisfying. Mm-hmm. And then like the next case in arson, I just, when I totally fucked it up and uh, not to go back to repeating ourselves, the, the fact that I was sitting there totally thinking that, that it was nailing everything. And then uh, it turns out that I was reading the people wrong uh that just kind of killed it for me you dumb um, fuck I, i'm such a dumb fuck um but yeah ultimately that's one of my big problems with it is just that you it, one of the big key gameplay elements is the fact that you have to read people but with yeah. so many people so many different actors and acting styles and them all having to kind of read differently. Yeah, it's way too many variables it's, that you there's can't. Too many, there's no game there at any at, at that point. Yeah, yeah it's. And did yeah. you guys agree at all that there was? I mean, because they have this facial animation technology, that I mean, it was almost like there was overacting at a lot of points to where. Yeah, it, it's what, in the interrogations, especially. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like their idle really, animations. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The some. What was amazing to me is that there were some people in the game, some actors and actresses in the game, that were fucking amazing. Mm-hmm. There was one guy in particular that you'll get to eventually, Dean. And I don't know if you'll you'll point him out uh, as much, but there is a guy that you sit down at a table with and talk to, and just his his reactions to what you say are just fucking priceless. And it just, I don't know, but I think, but he was actually one of the harder people to read in the game too. So it was, it was so, the acting was so good, but then that made it the game that much harder. Yeah. There have been, there have been some really, really good ones, but yeah, Mm -hmm. it just, it doesn't, even if they're acting well, it doesn't, it doesn't make them any easier to read. And maybe that's a, I don't know. It just, I just, I feel like I'm, it's hard to, it's hard to tell if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Yeah. But, so oh well. fuck you, L.A. Noir. Fuck you. <laughs> no, don't say that. <laughs> I'm gonna beat it. I'm I'm t- I'm totally gonna I'm gonna go old school. I'm gonna get my dot matrix printer out. I'm gonna get on the BBS that's down the street, and I'm gonna get the walkthrough, and I'm gonna print it out, and it's gonna be like 20 pages long, and I'm gonna just flip through and do it. And wear your fedora. And wear my. Fedora. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm gonna walk through this L.A. Noir, eh? <laughs> But yeah, but it is a great game if you like I, adventure games. Yeah. I still highly, highly recommend it because it is, it is a, if anything, it is something to just be a part of. Because exactly. Of how I think I think we talked it is. last week. I think just it's a game you, that people need to play. Yes. Whether I'm, I'm very, I am, at, I'm ecstatic that I played it. I am very happy that I played it. I totally think that I got my money's worth, especially since I'm getting like. 32 bucks back from Amazon for it. So, um, but yeah, it's, it's great. I, I really think that it's a good game, but just, it's not personally for me. So, so that's it. But that's really all I've been playing. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Quitter. Anything else? Anybody? Really? Nothing else. That's it. No, that's certain. That is all I've played all mm. week. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Maybe you just needed to give it a little break, I, then come back. I play a little bit of Outland. You guys play oh, that? Oh God, how is that? I want to get that's that. That's the MMO, right? No, no, no that's that no, side that's scroller, isn't it? Side scroller on Xbox Live, uh, kind of like, like kind of like Castlevania, Metroid type. <sighs> yes, it looks so good. Yeah, it, it really is. Oh, I want that game. Our style is really good. It kind of throws in an Ikariga type where you have different colors that you have to balance. Oh, really? 
damage. Yeah. Yep. Oof. Definitely worth it. Wow, I'm going to have to get that. I kind of want to download the uh, Dungeons and Dragons Daggerdale. I heard that was shit. I heard it's, it's been pretty getting bad. terrible reviews. Yeah. yeah. But there's a quick look on Giant Bomb where they were really enjoying it. So was I that wasn't that with the developer though? No, There's... no. Oh. <laughs> I, I, I never yes! watched. I never this watched. Great. Because, okay. I mean, that would just be yeah. But uh, I don't. I downloaded the demo on Xbox, but I haven't played it yet. Hmm. I'd be interested to hear your impressions on that. Yeah. All right. Yeah. But I think that's going to do it for us. Well, gentlemen. No point in hanging around this dump any longer. Wait! Where are you going? I was going to make a spread. Show's over, folks. You can't go. All the plants are going to die. Take off, eh? Thanks for listening to Multiplying, the companion podcast at Multiplying.net. Questions, comments, feedback, errors, etc. can be sent to Multiplying at gmail.com. We invite you to write a review on iTunes and visit our website at www.multiplying.net. We've made a lot of friends, shared a lot of laughs. Often at the expense of others. I think some people are going to be upset. Let me just close this conversation by saying you are one unique individual. Thank you and good night. So, uh, turns out, this just in. Who? Uh, Meshach Taylor, who played Anthony Bouvier on Designing Women, is still alive. Oh, thank God. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Did you say Meshach? Meshach. Coming across the wire. She's still alive. Yes. So who's who? Who is it that I think I'm dead? I'm gonna. We are gonna find this out, ladies okay. and gentlemen. Okay. No. We yeah. We need to find out who did I think was dead. Okay. You're thinking that uh, chick that just died. The, oh yeah. Estelle Dixie Eddie. Carter. No. She no, died last still, year. Dixie Carter. Yes. That's who it was. She, she was, was like the main chick. Yeah. Yeah. She is dead, folks. Yes. She was Coming 70 years, years old. Dixie Carter. Oh, this, this just in from April of 2010. Dixie Carter died. Yeah, she passed away. She has an official website still. Our thoughts oh, and prayers are. All right. Are, uh, yeah. She died yeah. this year. Yeah. Wah 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 wah. Yeah, way to end that on a high note. Yeah, yeah. people. Sorry died. to the Dixie Carter fans. People died. What did she say sh- about what, what is she said? doing? She's logging in. She was. Is she gonna get on Skype? Yeah, she was taking a shit. And now she's here. <laughs> <laughs> you. What? You're not allowed to reference me because you're kind of being a dummy. Okay. It's a, I, I, I'm gonna piss her off right when she gets on. It'll be it'll be fun. Okay. All right. Bye. I'll, I'll miss I'll misdirect the uh, anger toward me. Oh, thanks. <laughs> you'll, you'll you'll be safe for about an hour. Misdirect or redirect? That's what I meant. <laughs> oh, was that Shannon? Yeah, hi. Oh, I hi, was lady. To leave. Aww. Now that you're here. Yeah. Yeah, I know how that goes. I, I only take it personally. Don't don't worry. Oh, I know you're calloused. It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> I have no feelings. <laughs> so I stayed on just to say hello because I have to go. Okay. But I wanted Bye. to say Bye. <laughs> So hi and bye. I hope you have a wonderful time playing War. Oh, yeah. What? Oh God, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. I'm playing some fucker. <laughs> um, right. Wow. Okay. Yeah, that's what I got. She's been begging me for weeks to play, and then. What happens? Oh God. Well, now what? it's like 11 o'clock. Like, I thought... Well, then go to bed. Podcast would be like an hour, and then, you know. All right, well, have a wonderful evening. Thank you for having me on again, Steve and Shannon. Sorry, oh, yeah. I can't say hello for longer than two minutes. That's all right. Oh, yeah, you don't, you don't need to thank me. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Jason, I hope your finger gets better. And... <laughs> <laughs> it's care about you. Just your finger. That is, that is the weirdest way to say goodbye. Oh, wow. You know what? Fuck you. Fuck you. Just go. Just go. Um, hey, Steve, are you logged in? Yeah. Okay, hang on a second. Steve, okay, oh, bye. I hope he's gone. Bye. <laughs> bye, Jason. I hope you have a wonderful night. Yeah. Well, with your he's finger. He's probably not your, going your, to. Your, no, I'm not going to. <laughs> <laughs> no, you have a good night. Whatever. 
okay, okay. Yeah. I'm... <laughs> He's, he just wants to hang up so just, bad right now. Just disconnect, please. Yeah. <laughs> okay, bye. 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 I ain't mess with him. He's so nice. He's like the only nice person we know. Better be gone. Hey, what does that mean? <laughs> All these other people are fucking. Everyone else we know is like a total d bag. Hey, Steve. Why? Why do I like you people? <laughs> I agree with all of that.